All right, so good morning. So good morning and welcome back to JPC Spiritual Talk. It's Jared Campbell. So this morning's devotional, sitting at Jesus' feet. And a small reading from Luke chapter 10, verse 40. We're also going to read from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. We'll take a little deeper look into this passage. That's after our devotional reading. But before we get into all this, we'll start out by asking the Lord a quick prayer. In the, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we're going to ask the Lord, we're going to ask the Lord to shine to our hearts, loving Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge. And open up the eyes of our mind. That we may understand your teachings in scripture. Help us to apply what we learn so that you're having conquered simple desires. We may pursue a spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all the things that are pleasing to you. You're Christ, our God, you are light, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever, the sages. Amen. For it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Again, again, my mother, brothers, and sisters are those who hear the word of God and do it. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, good morning. Welcome back. So grace is faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Christ is in our midst. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. It's my pleasure to bring you all God's word. So sitting at Jesus' feet, jump right into it this morning, get our screen shared over. We go sitting at Jesus' feet. The Luke chapter 10, verse 40. So sitting at Jesus' feet in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it says, But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. She came up and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? So tell her to give me a hand. Luke chapter 10, verse 40. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Martha loved Jesus dearly, would have done anything for him. Her struggle came in being still. Martha spent so much time serving Jesus that she had no time to enjoy his company or get to know him better. The harder Martha worked, the more frustrated she became with her sister Mary. Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet while Martha securing around the house to make sure everything was in perfect order for Jesus. Martha's Service, though, it started out with gladness, deteriorated into resentment and envy. It is good. It is good to want to serve Christ as an expression of love for what he has done for you. Yet when your activity consumes your time and energies so that you have no time for him, you'll become too busy. You may think, as Martha did, that if you don't do the work, it won't get done. That may be true, but Jesus taught that your highest priority must be your relationship with him. If anything distracts you from that relationship, the activity is not from God. God will not ask you to do something that hinders your relationship with Christ. At times, serving God and carrying out his mission is the best way to know and experience God. Other times, it is important to sit quietly at his feet and listen to what he is saying. We are not called to continually sit at the feet of Jesus. Otherwise, our service for him sees neither are we called to serve him instantly without taking time to find restoration in his presence have you been serving god so digitally that you have not had time to spend with him in the father son and the holy spirit let's look at that last little bit it says at the end have you been serving god so digitally that you have not had time to spend with him in the father son Holy Spirit. So it's a good thing to think about, right? For all of us. All right. So let's get to Luke chapter 10. So in Luke <clears throat> chapter 10, verses 38 through 40. So Mary, Mary and Martha worship and serve. 30, verse 38, Luke chapter 10. It says, Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. 
And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So Mary and Martha, right? They're also the sisters of Lazarus, right? So Mary and Martha are also the sisters of Lazarus, who Jesus raised from the dead, right? John chapter 11, verse 1, the death of Lazarus, right? So it's this, those are Lazarus' sisters, and then he'll end up raising Lazarus. Lazarus will, La, Lazarus will get sick and die, right? And Jesus will raise him from the dead. John chapter 11, starting in John chapter 11. Martha is not rebuked, right? So listen attentively. Martha is not rebuked for serving. Listen attentively. So Martha was never rebuked for serving, right? That's not what he was rebuking her for. So she was not rebuked for serving. There's nothing wrong with serving other people. So she's not rebuked for that, right? So she's not rebuked for serving. But instead, he rebukes her for what? Complaining, right? For complaining and for what? Being distracted, worried, and troubled right there in scripture. So she's being rebuked for complaining and for being distracted, worried, and troubled. When we follow Christ, right? So in following Christ, when we follow Christ, we serve in order to facilitate what the spread of the gospel, right? We talked about that last night. If you're following my Acts studies, Acts chapter six, right? Verses one through four, right? The seven chosen to serve, right? So in following Christ, when, when we are called to follow Christ, we serve in order to facilitate, facilitate the spread of the gospel. Right? So sometimes, right, you don't always have to do all the things that need to be done. Martha didn't have to do any of those things, right? She could just sit there and listen to Jesus talk, right? She didn't have to work herself to death, right? Jesus wasn't that type of person. He just wanted the people to sit and listen to him. So Martha was allowing that to get in the way of what was the most important thing, which was Jesus was there. She was getting envious of her sister, but her sister, according to Jesus, was doing the right thing by sitting there listening to him. But what she does point out what Jesus was coming to teach, right? How important it was to establish a relationship with your creator. That it's the most important thing. It's establish a relationship with the Creator. We all need to listen to the story of Mary and Martha because it's important for all of us, right? There's moments where we all can be Mary, right? And there's moments where we're all Martha. Does that make sense? So this story is all of us, right? So when I read this, this it's, it's this is all of humanity, right? This is all of society. Right? We're either Mary or Martha. Right. And sometimes we can be both. We can be both Martha and Mary. Think about it. You're being in, in a position where you were you were having to do a lot more work, right? While others kind of sit, right? It made you upset. So we have to keep that in mind, right? When it comes to our creator, it's better to spend the time with him than it is to work ourselves to death become envious of others, especially our own family around us. You know, <clears throat> all these little stories that we read in the Bible are really good for us to reflect on. Because this, these stories are, or can also be about all of us, right, and how they're told. Think about it. These were told so long ago, but still have so much play in today. How important it is to develop a relationship with your creator. Sometimes I don't feel like that's taught enough anymore, right? It's not taught enough on the importance of having a relationship with Christ. You don't see a whole lot of people teaching scripture anymore, right? You have a lot of YouTubes and Rumble accounts with people who talk about God 
but they don't they don't teach God. They don't teach His Word, right? You see a lot of channels that are wrapped up with views and how many subscriptions they have, you know, trying to think that they can predict the coming of Christ or, you know, they're telling you things, telling you what not to do, right? They, you know, it's all these different channels, you know, can't do this, you, you can't do that, but they don't teach you how to develop a relationship with your creator. I truly believe you know, if you if you want to get closer to your creator, it starts by seeking the scripture, by reading the scriptures. You got you gotta pray. You gotta keep asking, you gotta keep seeking, you gotta keep knocking. It's a narrow path for a reason, and few will find it. But how can you understand your creator if you don't even read your Bible? Think about that. If you're not even reading the scriptures, how do you understand your creator? The Bible was meant to be read every day for your entire life. The scriptures were meant to be read to see God's truth, to put to action the things that we read right? and help those who are in need. We are to imitate Christ. But how can we imitate Christ if we're not reading our Bible? See, that's the thing. You can't imitate your creator if you're not reading his word. If you're not learning from the parables, which he spoke to his own disciples and to everybody. Right? How do you know? How can you teach? How can you preach or even teach if you don't understand the things that are in the Bible? God is not about likes. It's not about subscriptions. It's not about a huge following. Remember, Jesus started out with 12 disciples, right? It wasn't about how big his following was. It was about the message, right? He chose quality over quantity. Think about that. And the Bible says, pick up your cross. You got first to deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. He wants quality over quantity, right? He doesn't want passive followers. So we're going to close out right, this morning with a reading from Psalms 95, verses 1 through 3. I'm going to close out with a little short prayer. And I figured this was a good to close out with. And it says, I will shout with joy. So Psalms 95, verses 1 through 3. Psalms 95, verses 1 through 3. <laughs> Call the worship and obedience. This is one of the psalms that I do with the kids at the learning center, our church's learning center, as part of their memorization. They're learning Psalms 95. So as I call the worship and obedience. So Psalms 95 is about a, a psalm calling you to worship, and it's about having obedience. All right? So I thought it would be these first three verses that we'll close out with today. So it says, come let us sing. To the Lord, let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us come, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him the Psalms for the Lord is for the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods, and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I praise you, O glorious Father, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And sing songs before you and make a joyful noise to you because you are the rock of my salvation. My heart wants to glorify you and make joyful naces to you. Father, with thanksgiving in my heart, and I enter before your presence with thanksgiving and songs of praise. You do so much for me that I just want to rejoice and celebrate before you. Father, I praise and thank you because you are the great God, a great king above all kings, and you are mine. In the Father, Son. And the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, sages. It's beautiful. That's what Martha should have concentrated on, right? She should have shouted with joy. She should have took the time to spend with Jesus instead of worrying about what her house was looking like, right? Sometimes we just have to take a break. 
another indication of saying that sometimes we have to take a break. See, Martha was needing a break too. She was a little stubborn about it. So instead of just taking the break, because it's like I said, it's okay to serve. It wasn't the fact of her serving that we read, right? But in her service, let her get envy when she started complaining and she was troubled. And Jesus, that's what Jesus rebuked her for. We have to be careful about all of us. I'll close out in our prayer. In our last prayer, we'll get out of here. Thank you all again for following. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord God, you spoke to us through divine human words. You illuminate the souls of sinners to comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear simply as hear spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith. Having a blameless life in contact without approaching Christ our Lord, you are alive. And to you we give glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever, the sages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. You forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom of the power, the glory of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever. The sages. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Sages, but yeah. apart peace, in the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ, peace be with you all. Go away, peace, shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. We go in peace. Thank you all so much for following. Jerry Wesley Campbell, good morning, good day, whenever and however all these messages find you, right? Even the studies. Thank you all so much. JPCE spiritual talk, never ever hold back, right? Seek truth, develop that relationship with your creator, right? Seek the scriptures. Be a doer of good deeds, just not a hearer of spiritual words. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. You ask in prayer. You seek in learning God's truth by seeking the scriptures, and you knock by doing God's will, by putting to action what you read, the teachings of Jesus. We are to love God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. We're also to love our neighbors. We love ourselves. Who's our neighbor? Everyone's our neighbor. Right? Even helping out our enemies, we're also our neighbors. And remember that too. Right? Never render evil for evil. The only way to, to really squash evil is to do good. Not more evil. That's all I have. Love you all so much.